And now to talk about the political stakes of the Democrats' major legislative victory, I am joined by Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report with Amy Walter and Annie Linsky with The Washington Post. Tamara Keith is away. Hello to both of you. So it's been a big weekend here in Washington. Yes. Congress got something done. They passed the Democrats' uh, victory in the Senate. That's right. Uh, Amy, uh, what do you make of this? I mean, we're not used to saying that. <laughs> well, not certainly uh, in recent months. Although, as I said the other week, Democrats have had a pretty good run of things for the course of this summer between guns and the semiconductor bill and now this, which of course has to still make it through the House, but that's still a, a big success. The question is, it's long-term and short-term political implications, right? And in the short term, what we know historically is even parties that pass major legislation during a midterm year, whether it was Bill Clinton or Barack Obama or Donald Trump or LBJ, <laughs> they have not been rewarded in a midterm year for big legislative policy victories. Now, two years later, at a presidential election, perhaps, but all of those presidents lost seats in the House in their first midterm election. The other real big question for the short term is, are voters going to feel better about the economy by October, November? You can have people come on and tell you everything about it's called the Inflation Reduction Act and things are getting better and we're not in a recession. But right now, people believe we're headed to a recession and the Consumer Confidence Index is about as low as it, as it has been in its history. And Annie, what about that? I mean, we heard Brian Deese from the White House just a few minutes ago saying, oh, people are going to feel, they're going to see it in their lower prescription drug prices, uh, medical bills. But, but how much of that is, is going to be felt? Well, I think that's right. Amy's right. It won't be felt immediately. But I think I'd, I'd hate for one thing to get lost here, which is, you know, this is a very big piece of legislation. I mean, Democrats, I was thinking about this recently, I mean, since the turn of this millennia, have been talking about this talking point of um, we are going to have um, Medicare um, negotiate for prescription drug right. prices. We have heard this talking point from this party for, you know, the last 25 years. And they have finally done it. Yeah. And so I, th I do think that that is something that they can say to their voters, that they got a major piece of their agenda done. I think it's right. A lot of things that they asked for, they did not get done. There's no child tax credit that's been off the table. But there are things here that Democrats can talk about in the fall. And, you know, talking to some Republicans about this, they are also saying they realize that they will be on defense on the prescription drug piece, but yeah. also, interestingly, the pay for. They are realizing that, that Democrats really do have a good populist talking point, that they are paying for this bill by having the richest companies, you know, in the, in the country, in the world, really, that haven't been paying taxes, the companies that have been, had zero taxes that they've paid, suddenly having to pay taxes. So. They're going to you're, you're going to see corporate um, minimum corporate tax again, as we heard Brian Deese talking about. Um, and you're also you're going to you're going to hear more conversation about the deficit. The deficit. Democrats can say we're doing something about the deficit. The question is how much are voters right? How much are voters believing and, and believing that? And 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 the other important piece, uh, uh, piggybacking on what Annie said about passing legislation they've talked about for years, it's not insignificant what they've done on climate and for Democratic leaning voters. Climate is a top issue, even as inflation and abortion, those issues continue to rise and a concern for Democratic voters, especially younger voters, the key elements of the Democratic coalition, they are very concerned about climate. And so they have a story to tell. Is it enough for this election? Don't know, but certainly something for 2024 as well. Yeah, because so many, there's so much focus, Annie, right now on the midterms, understandably. Right. Right. I mean, the Democrats want uh, to, to uh, hold down their losses in the House, and certainly they want to hold on. Hold on to the Senate. Speaking of which, we have more August primaries. Just, We've spoken about that before. Yes. Uh, coming up, Annie, uh, tomorrow in four states, including Wisconsin, a state that we are watching very closely, a hard fought between the uh, former President Trump, who's been in there endorsing his favorite uh, and other candidates. What are you looking for? I think the big race that everybody's going to be watching tomorrow night, in, you're right, that Wisconsin governor's race, it's the Republican primary. And there, you, as you pointed out, you have a candidate that Trump has backed and a candidate that Pence, uh, that a former um, Vice President Pence has backed. And I think what's interesting in this particular one is the two candidates honestly are not that different. I mean, you're not looking at a, 
a scenario where you have sort of a, a truly more sort of mo moderate candidate versus a more extreme candidate. These are candidates that have policy positions that are quite similar. They have both sort of flirted with, you know, denying the 2020 election. They have similar views on abortion. It's more of a stylistic difference. And so I think what you're really going to see is, yes, this will be a test of how much sway does Trump continue to have over the primary. But whoever wins on, on you know, whoever wins tomorrow is still going to be somebody who has talked about denying the election and has not really embraced that Biden is president of the United States. It is sort of funny in Wisconsin to think about. So Scott Walker, the one of his, uh, his lieutenant governor, who he's endorsed, is one of those candidates in the primary. Scott Walker was the original Tea Party. He was the anti-establishment. Yes. Now his candidate is being derided as part of the rhino establishment by Donald Trump, as well as the Speaker of the House, Robin Voss, who has been just uh, really for Democrats, the person who they've fought up against time and time again. And yet Donald Trump has endorsed Voss's primary opponent. Why? Because Voss will not admit that the election was stolen or rigged or believe in the big lie that uh, the president put forward. So it is quite remarkable that in just a very short amount of time, the people who are on the vanguard, on the vanguard. of bringing Republicans into power in that state and taking a sort of no holds barred approach are now seen as the moderates and they are part of the establishment. Which sets it up for in November, Annie. Yes. A really fascinating contest. Right. Oh, uh, absolutely. In in Wisconsin and these other states we've been looking at. Well, I think in Wisconsin in particular, I think the Senate race there yeah. will be of yeah. particular interest. I mean, there you have Mandela Barnes, a 35-year-old African American working class roots candidate who will be taking on Ron Johnson, who's much older, he's very wealthy, he's a much more sort of traditional Republican and um, has said a, a sort of a number of very controversial things. And so you'll have a, a, a fascinating contest between those two. That's right. You've, and you're the one who said, uh, you know, no more August primary. <laughs> right. But, but there they is keep some coming. interest. No, in there's these. a lot. There's a lot yeah. going yeah. on in this. And uh, eventually what we're going to see is many of these candidates that Donald Trump has endorsed, they are right now in some of these Senate races running behind where they should be given the environment. Are they going to be able to catch up before November? And if so, will Trump get the blame for perhaps Democrats keeping hold of the Senate? Utterly fascinating, totally. all of it. It's a lot of fun. Amy Walter, Annie Linsky, thank, thank you both. You're thanks. welcome. It's great.